Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a quick look at pre-decimal silver and what to look for when you're adding it to your stack. So with that being the case, let's get on with the show. Hello everybody, how are we all doing today? I um, I woke up this morning to find there was a new video out by The Silver Stacker. Now, if you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend that you do. It's, uh, he's picked up some more lovely pieces of silver for his ever-growing stack, uh, some of which was actually some British pre-decimal silver. And it just really gave me the idea to, uh, to get a bit of mine out today and uh, just go through a few of the basics in what to look for when you're purchasing your own pre-decimal. So, first of all, uh, now I think what the silver stack had purchased mostly were some of these silver sixpence here, which uh, he was very correct in saying that all the sixpences dated prior to 1947 are made of an alloy of 50% silver and 50% uh, copper and nickel. Uh, now, I think this is one of the ones you had, one of the silver stacker. Now, uh, if you look here, that's, uh, that's the free oak branch design by George Kruger Gray with uh, six acorns to show that it, it is a sixpence piece. So yeah, it's a lovely little coin. Uh, you can see there, that's the Bertram McKennell depiction of King George V there. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what I really wanted to do was go through a few of the basics of what to look out for when purchasing pre-decimal silver. So again, as the silver stacker did very correctly point out, uh, one thing to keep away from is anything dated 1947 and afterwards. Now you can see this right here. This is a crown that's dated 1981. Now what that means is that there's absolutely no silver content in this coin whatsoever. It is made 100% of an alloy called copper nickel, which is a mix of copper and nickel. So definitely be wary of that. So that's all the coins dated 1947 and beyond. You definitely want to stay away from them if you are looking to stack silver because there is literally no silver in them whatsoever. So next up, we have coins that are dated between 1920 and 1946. Those dates are inclusive. So that's any coin with a date of 1920 to 1946 on it. They're made of what's known as 500 silver, which uh, again, as I say, that's a mix of half silver and half copper and nickel. So they, they do have a silver content. It's not, uh, it's not a high silver content. As I say, it is only 50%, but they definitely do have a silver content in them. So they are definitely something worth considering doing for the stack now in the past these have been an excellent way to purchase silver at close to the spot price but uh, recently i have definitely noticed a spike in the premium when it comes to these coins now um you really could use to get these coins in a bundle for and pretty much nearly spot price and uh, it's very rare to find that these days now where uh, a lot of times they are being sold as individual coins so you know it could be a good sign for anybody who already owns uh, pre-decimal silver as it, it does seem to be increasing in value uh, not a great sign for new stackers who are looking to uh, to build up and, and uh, build their stack up but definitely something worth keeping your eye out for because as i say you, you can still find them at a good price every now and again and if you do find them at a low enough price it is definitely worth picking up okay so when it comes to coins that are dated between 1919 and earlier they're actually made of what's known as sterling silver or 92.5 percent silver so there is a hell of a lot more silver content in these coins which would make them a lot more appealable to stackers now the only problem with that is when it does come to the pre-1920 sterling silver pre-decimal coinage that does generally tend to hold much more of a premium to it they are normally considered to be more of a numismatic item than a standard piece of silver so that's definitely something worth considering because it could definitely bring your dollar cost average up a bit there that could so why do these coins contain different amounts of silver in them well that's because at the different dates they were debased uh, the reason for that, and you will notice that the dates coincide with the end of both world wars, and that was basically just to cut costs of production. Now, obviously, uh, this coin that contains only half silver would be a lot cheaper to produce than this coin right here, which is the same coin but made of 925 silver. Uh, so, and in 1920, which was obviously a couple of years after the First World War, they debased the coins from 92.5% silver down to 50% silver. And again in 1947, again within a couple of years of the end of the Second World War there. 
So that's basically why the coins went from containing silver to containing no silver. Okay, so if we look at a few tips of what to look for, uh, just to make it a little bit easier when you're looking to pick up pre-decimal silver, is anything with any depiction of Queen Elizabeth, and doesn't no matter which depiction it is, will not contain silver unless it is a silver proof. And if you give me one second, I'll show you how to quickly identify a silver proof against a non-silver proof. Now, what you will always find on a silver proof is, and now if you can see this right here, you you will see this exactly the same coin. This is these are both the 1918 Charles and Diana commemorative crowns. This one, however, is a silver proof. So this one is made of silver. Now, what you will always find with the silver proofs is the background is a uh, mirrored finished with the faces being more of a, uh, a frosted finish there. So if I turn that around, you can see once again on the obvious there, you can see once again, it has a mirrored finish, finish on the background and a frosted finish on the portrait. Now you don't have that on these coins right here. So even if you polish this coin to make it look like a mirror, it, the whole coin would be polished. So that is a great way of, of picking out a silver proof at a glance. It's not foolproof, of course. Uh, people can obviously fake those coins. And there are, of course, other and better ways to test your silver, which I have gone through in a video recently. So if you haven't checked that out as of yet, definitely do so after this video. Anyway, again, so anything that's got a date of 1947 onward is something that you want to leave behind if you are stacking, unless it is one of the silver proofs. They will normally come in a collector's case with a certificate of authenticity, just like that one right there. So that is definitely something to look out for when you are picking up a silver proof. Okay, so uh, funnily enough, after just saying that, I've looked down at my little pile of silver right here, and I can see right here a coin with Queen Elizabeth's head on, which absolutely contradicts what I've just said. But this is the exception to that, because what this is, this is a overseas pre-decimal coin right here uh, as you can see on this one this is actually an australian sixpence so unlike the uk pre-decimal and it's great i know it's this because it's brilliant to pick this up foreign currency some of it at least definitely did contain silver a lot longer than the uk stuff did so uh, this this australian sixpence right here is still 500 silver even though it's dated 1955 and that's because Australian coinage, very similar to the United States coinage, that kept some silver content up to 1964. So that is definitely a, a very different video in itself, but something to uh, to be wary of. As I say, when you're looking at UK stuff, anything with Queen Elizabeth's head on is absolutely not silver. That might not be the case when you're looking at foreign currency. Okay, so going back a little bit further in time, you have King George VI here. And he makes things a little bit more difficult because he's the monarch who was in reign at the time where the final debates from 50% to 0% happened. So you will find some of his coins that are silver and some of his coins that aren't silver. So it definitely want to be careful of when, you, when you're dealing with George VI there. Now, I do believe George VI passed in 1952, but regardless of that, as I say, the final year for coins to contain silver is 1946. So anything 1947 onwards, unless it's silver proof, it, it's of no interest to anyone who's looking to collect silver. Okay, so next up, you have George V, and the best and easiest way to identify the difference between George V and George VI there is George V has a much better moustache. So as you can see right there, George V, absolutely outstanding moustache. George V, no moustache at all. So that's the best and easiest way to identify the two differences there. Because it can be a little bit confusing, George V and George V being right after each other. But when we get on to George V, things start getting a little bit easier again, because you can rest assured that any any coin with George V's face on it, be if it's a silver coin, will contain at least 50% silver. Now you normally find the older coins, the higher the premium. So you may be paying a little bit more for a George V half crown like this is than you would be doing for a George V six half crown like that one is right there. But as I say, it does make it uh, a lot easier to identify the coins that have a silver content to them. 
Okay, so the next tip I have would concern this little coin right here, which is a threepence. Now, you can see it's got a very similar design to the sixpence I'd covered earlier, where it has the three oak branches, but this one has the three acorns to show that it's a threepence piece. Now, the good thing about these silver threepences is that every single one of them contains silver. Now, if I just grab one of these quickly, you'll see this is a brass threepence. So this is what replaced the silver sixpence. So when that was debased, it became a completely different coin, which does make it a lot easier to identify the ones that contain silver. The problem with the silver ones, of course, is that they are a very small coin indeed, about the size of a thumbnail, as you can see. Uh, so they don't contain a huge amount of silver, especially the 500% ones. But they are fun little coins, and I do like to have them as little chips of silver. They do have fun in a little pile there like that. So that covers the years to look for, and uh, and we've covered the three pence and the six pence there a little bit. Uh, but after that, the other coins to look for would be this one right here, which is the shilling. And as you can see, we've got a, a few silver sh shillings on this side. Uh, plenty on this album left to fill in as of yet. Uh, it is one of the albums that's a bit lower down on the list. But so the next, as I say, the next coin up would be the shilling. After the shilling, you have the florin, also known as the two shilling piece. As you can see, we have a few in there as well. So these would be 500 silver florins right here. Uh, and again, as with the others, they do continue from the silver ones through 1947 and onwards where they contain zero silver. But that would be the next coin to look for, the double shilling, AKA the florin. Okay, and after that, the next denomination up is the this coin right here, which is the double florin. Now, this is not a coin you will come across very often, and that's purely because it wasn't minted for a very long period of time at all. It was actually only minted between 1887 and 1890. So there was only four years the double florin existed for, but that would be the next denomination upwards. After that, it would be this coin right here, which is the half crown. Now, this is my favourite coin when it comes to stacking. You can normally find these at a re very reasonable price. They're a nice size coin, which means they contain a, a, quite a nice bit of silver to them. And they've just got a lovely design to them as well. So that's the, that's the half crown. And as I say, that is my favourite type of pre-decimal coin to, uh, to add to the stack there. And then finally, we have the full crown, which is this coin right here. And the size of this coin is roughly around about the same size as a modern Silver Britannia. So they are a nice size coin. And if you get one of the pre-1920s like this one right here, it, it is getting towards a full ounce of silver. Obviously, it's not a, entirely a full ounce of silver because it's not quite the same size as a... Uh, as an actual Britannia, and it is only 92.5%. So if there, is a, there is a bit under an ounce on these, but it is uh, definitely much closer to an ounce. So uh, stacking-wise, these are a great coin if you can get them, but as I said previously, they do come with a bit of a premium to them, these ones do as well. Okay, so there may be a coin or two I've missed out from there. Uh, there is the groat, which would have been a four pence piece. And uh, and after the crown, you can start looking towards half sovereigns and, and sovereigns. But obviously, that's a gold coin, not a silver coin. So it's not something I've, uh, I've included here. But I think that pretty much covers most of the quick tips I can give to stackers who are looking to maybe add a bit of pre-decimal to their stack. The silver stacker, it was amazing to see you add a bit of pre-decimal to your stack. It is something, as you can see, I'm a massive fan of myself and I love to see all the stackers adding it to their collections. So I hope you're able to get many more coins soon to come, mate. Okay, so that's pretty much it for me today. I hope you found this video useful and uh, definitely please let me know in the comments if pre-decimal silver is something that you would look to consider stacking yourself. Uh, also, let me know if it's something you've got or if it's just something that's of literally no interest to you whatsoever. I'm, I'm always interested to hear everybody's thoughts and opinions when it comes to stacking. And just as a very quick reminder, I do have my 500 subscriber giveaway running at the moment where you can win one of these two fabulous prizes, either these two coronation coins or this one full ounce of silver. Uh, all you have to do is find the 500 subscriber giveaway, which is hidden in one of my recent uploads. It's somewhat of a mini treasure hunt, but as soon as you find that, just follow the instructions on the video and you'll be entered into the giveaway, which will be drawn as soon as I hit 500 subscribers. So thank you all once again for taking the time to watch my video today. I hope you've all had a great time. And until next time, as always, 
keep stacking, take care, and goodbye.